context and the right uh, state of mind, the state of being, which we need to align with in order to create our natural reality. The nature, the, the reality of nature is, is, is a constant and it's up to us to align with the immutable, unchangeable laws that create reality, that sustain reality, and that ultimately dissolve reality into a new beginning. And uh, you could say the world's at a stage where we're at a crux point where a lot of cycles are coming to an end and new cycles are beginning. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I'll just bring up my slides. So uh, these symbols, what I'm doing is I'm basically creating natural models or natural, um, natural symbols which are really teach us how to basically, uh, it teaches us or gives us a structure in which we can, we can understand how reality or how nature works. So the cross is really a very ancient symbol, pre, pre-religion. It is a Gnostic symbol which represents the above and below and the left and right. And this symbol you can see in many ancient uh, many ancient traditions, the medicine wheel, the Native American medicine wheel being a classic example. You've got the uh, north or the above, which is a connection to our spiritual nature. We've got the below, um, which is in a vertical line. This just creates the, the, the vertical. And we've got the earth, uh, which is our material nature or our material world that we live in on earth. And the left of the cross is the, could relate to the left brain. It relates to the air element. And the right of the cross is the emotional side of our being and the, um, the right brain. And, this, and when you put the circle around it, the circle as in the, uh, the circle encloses the energy, everything moves in circles circular energy is how how everything is created through through the cycles of um, energy and how it moves on the right I've got the five pointed star it's just another symbol that you can use we can use to depict the five elements or the five senses uh, it's really another way of saying the same thing as the cross it just has five points, whereas the the uh, the uh, others as a fourth. The four points are the cardinal points of Earth, and you could say the ether is the whole circle. But in the five pointed star, the pentagram, it's another it's another sacred symbol which re- which represents um, our five elements. So when we're talking about nature, we're talking about the invisible aspects of nature uh, and the energy behind nature. We're talking about the natural elements of earth, air, fire, water, and ether, which are the doorways, as I say, to to various states of being um, and various attitudes, uh, states of mind, um, our female element, masculine element, and uh, the different, all the different sort of aspects of life in our material spiritual reality. We also have the laws, the natural laws or natural principles, and these make up our truth. It's like baking a cake. We have all various ingredients and our life is a, is a matter of putting the ingredients together to create a holistic life. When, we, when we're talking about truth, we start off with simple things like facts and evidence, paper trails. This is what's going on in the world today. This is what I call the lowest, lowest level of truth. It is a subjective truth. It is content. 
it is purely a stepping stone and it's very basic level of trying to understand what's happening with us and with the world. When we move into understanding the natural sciences, when we start integrating the, the natural laws and principles, which are more objective truths, this is where science came from. Science, like everything, came from nature. And there's certain scientific laws that will never change, such as the, the law of electromagnetism. And it, it is not subjective. It is an absolute objective truth. And as we get to understand that we are an electromagnetic being, our, our left brain is the, um, the electrical side, and our right brain or our emotions is the magnetism side. And this is what provides us the context in which we live on earth, which has its content. And in the middle, we have various concepts or our thoughts, which uh, create um, a link between the content and the contents. So again, I'm bringing out the earth, air, fire, water. These are always going to come up for us because these are the elements that make up our earth planet. Without the earth, air, fire, water, we wouldn't exist. And each element relates to um, a different state, as I mentioned. I'll go into these in a little bit more detail in, in, in the coming slides. And then we have um, the absolute truth. And when I talk about absolute truth, that's beyond the four elements. This is what I see as relevant to the etheric element. The ether element is our source, it is our blueprint, it is our template, and it is an absolute truth beyond, beyond our knowing in, in the physical reality. When we pass over, we will move into the absolute, except for very advanced souls. Some very advanced souls have been able to attain a knowing of the absolute. When we also, when we're talking about um, nature, we have, as I say, we have certain concepts. That's our thinking side. Then we have beliefs. Beliefs, people talk about beliefs as being um, the lie, but beliefs are also a stepping stone into knowing. We need to believe in the right things, such as if we believe in positivity, we believe in the natural sciences, if we believe in the objective truths more than the subjective truths, then that will lead us into the knowing. That's the way I see it anyway. Um, knowledge is power, but also we have to know that knowledge is knowing that we don't know. The more that we know, the more we don't know. And then uh, talking about beliefs again, Belief in yourself is a positive thing, uh, but ultimately we're leading to knowing ourselves. Uh, but if we believe in those subjective truths, if we, if we uh, have beliefs that the government are out to get us, that there's a big bogeyman under the bed, if we have beliefs that we are screwed because a lot of evidence looks very negative, those beliefs are absolutely counterproductive to our, our, our journey. We, we only look at them uh, in, in, as part of the journey, but they are not the whole truth. We have to balance it up with the, the elements, which is what my talk is all about. Then um, when we're under, as we, for me, is truth, consciousness, and freedom is my three key words. I use the Trinity or three values a lot because the Trinity is, is, is part of our natural science. And for me, it's truth, consciousness, and freedom, but other people would have other, other um, key, their key words. This is, this is what works for me. And for me, consciousness is the process. It's the process of um, taking the truth and creating our freedom. Also, freedom itself is a consciousness and, and knowledge or truth is 
is a certain level of consciousness. But within consciousness, we have unity consciousness, which is really the ultimate reality. That's the ultimate uh, source. And what we are doing with our conscious thought and with our feelings and actions, that creates our awareness, which brings us in alignment with ultimate unity consciousness or the nature of reality. And within consciousness, we can process our con our consciousness through three levels. That's our conscious thought, which is related to the neocortex of the brain. We have our subconscious, which is all our past beliefs, thoughts, um, everything that we believe in the subconscious or, or it's also called the unconscious. This is the primary driver of our life. Whether we're aware of the subconscious or not, it's still driving our life. This is related to feelings, the deep feelings and the limbic brain, which is where feelings are stored. We'll always remember something when we've had a strong emotion. And superconscious is our ultimate spiritual or spirit journey. That's us attaining, you could say, enlightenment. That's us Ultimately, that's our ultimate purpose, is to become super conscious of who we are and, and what, basically what everything is about. And these, these three levels, again, there's a trinity there, also relate to what I call the three minds, three minds which is actually not just housed in our brain. In fact, even the thoughts aren't housed in our brain. Our brain is just a receiver of thoughts from the field, or the quantum field of energy, and that harmonizes or integrates with our heart, which is also a thinking aspect or a feeling aspect to our mind. And then we get uh, our intuition or our instinct, which comes from our gut. We have gut feelings. And we have the feelings in our heart, which is our center and our center of power. And we have our brain, which is the receiver, which is bringing in thoughts on the field. And we have thoughts of our own volition. And that's ultimately what we want. We want to have conscious thought. Um, and that's really, that's really that. And then we're coming to me, it's coming to what I see as freedom. And for me, freedom is our purpose. As I say, freedom could also be our conscious awareness, which brings ultimate freedom. Freedom is our natural state of being and is the outcome of truth and consciousness applied to our physical life and our spiritual life. For me, ultimately, freedom is about choice. Freedom is about having more choices. It's about having that free will to choose. We have free will, but in our current world, our free will is highly distorted because we're kind of, we're told what to think and we are being conditioned through media, through many, many uh, ways. And so it appears like we don't have free will. This is why we have to get back to a conscious reality and get back to nature and get back to the objective truths, which will always be central to to, to my life and to anyone who wants to have a life of balance, we have to get back to that natural, the natural core foundation. We also have freedom of movement. We have freedom in gathering, which is obviously ultimately in peaceful gathering because we're becoming conscious beings. So we're not gathering to create violence. Consciousness is, is governing our freedom through that. Privacy, privacy is a very important freedom that we must protect at all costs. Um, the more conscious we become and the more we understand this, the more we can protect our privacy. And this is why we need to stand up through things like common law and um, understanding moral law and then we will, we wouldn't want um, 
more of this encroach, encroachment into our life. Privacy is highly important to me. And speech, of course, we have to be free to speak. Um, not everyone's going to agree, but we should be allowed to speak anyway. And if people don't like what people are saying, we can just delete it. We can don't listen to them. We can switch off. When we got all these laws around governing our speech, it's 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 highly in, in, incursive into our life. And ultimately, for me, freedom is about uh, understanding common law and the do no harm, the do no harm maxim. Common law is related to moral laws, and moral laws are a reflection and a, and a, aligned with natural law. It always comes back to natural law, natural natural um, sciences, electromagnetism, light, spirit, and our creator, ultimate intelligent creator or creative design. I just added this uh, slide in as the last minute. I thought it was worth mentioning. It's quite important. Life is a two-way communication. And often people uh, lose their way a bit because they think it's just one way and they think they're alone and there's no, they feel very isolated, but is, there's always a two-way communication. Energy is always an exchange. And the more we become conscious of ourselves, we can consciously, we're consciously downloading information, just like a computer, uh, however, we're often downloading the wrong information because it's been conditioned and fed into us through nefarious means and through subtle means that we're not aware of, hence we're raising our consciousness. But we can also upload information. Uploading information into the field, it's just like giving and receiving. We're, we're giving out and we receive back. And this is how energy works. And hence why giving out is so important. Because then we are setting ourselves up to receive. And we're giving out in alignment with our truth and within nature and within the laws of, of, of um, the laws of the principal laws of, of nature. We will always, we can never get lost. So ether is the energy blueprint. That is our source. That is always downloading energy into us because we're connected to it, intricately connected to it by the field. It is completely holistic. Everything is holistic. In other words, it's multidimensional. We're in a multidimensional universe. We're essentially, we're a hologram. We're, a holo we're an intelligent hologram. We can create holograms. We are like a holographic projection of source. Therefore, we have a lot of power because we can create um, our own um, holographic field, if you like, our own conscious field. And the, the, that plugs into the conscious field which surrounds the whole earth. So nature's always giving. It's always giving selflessly. That's why going into nature, into physical nature, is important too because just by being with physical nature, you are receiving energy without you having to think about it. Normally, always in thought about what to do and where to go and what, what we're going to do today and how we're going to do it. Well, nature is, is providing vicariously energy into our field which raises our energy, which allows us then to, to just be in the flow. The thinking isn't so um, in, uh, how do I put it? It's not like we have to think about what to think about. We just get thought. We just get thought through. And this is the power of nature is that it's supporting our it's supporting our energy in, uh, and it's providing um, everything comes from nature. I mean, sorry, everything comes from energy, which comes from nature. So I just, uh, most people know the chakras. I'll just briefly 
flick through these very fast. These are intricately also related to the elements and to the energy field. When I talk about the etheric field or the conscious field or the quantum field, that is interacting directly with each chakra. And the chakras are just like doorways, just like nature is a doorway. And our base chakra is connected to the earth element, primarily to the earth element. Uh, our sacral chakra is our water element, and that's where we desire. Solar plexus, or also the navel, the navel of the solar plexus is, is related to the air element, and that's our gut. Let's say like our gut brain, that's where we feel in control. Our heart chakra is the fire aspect, and that's the love aspect or our soul, seat of our soul. And then we have the throat chakra, which is our expression. And the third eye, which is our insight, our witnessing aspect. And the crown chakra, which is our, has our, the spiritual connection to that ethereal etheric element of the ether, the I am that I am. So in the earth, the earth element is primarily concerned with foundation structure. It's our physical world, it's our material world in its physicality. Um, it's our physical body. Uh, classic um, primary need with our earth element is, is food. Obviously whole foods, natural foods is the way to go, not processed food. So food is very much the nourishment we need from the earth element. It comes from the earth. We are what we eat. Uh, our body takes in that good quality food and then it keeps us, keeps us healthy. The earth element is also, like I've mentioned, it's our home base, it's our foundation. If we don't have our foundation in, a, in the physical earth, then we won't exist. It, it's our vehicle for our soul or our, and our spirit connection. The earth element relates to winter, the uh, season of winter, because earth is about reflection and winter is of reflective time. So the earth element is about going within and um, reflecting on how we've gone through the, for the earlier part of the seasons of, this, of, the, um, of the year. We've done our um, creating and we've done our action and we've harvested in the autumn. Winter is a time to go within. It's related to our base chakra, like I mentioned. And a key question that is related to the earth element is how. The how question, all the questions are important, but each question has its own particular um, purpose. And the how enables us to connect to the earth with our ideas, with our, with our visions and our missions and everything that we're doing, we have to know how we're going to do it. That's all in the planning. It's about planning ultimately and then we create the structure and we um, we basically uh, are creating that vehicle so we've got some one of my uh, fruit trees the pear tree and when it was in um, in, in well and fruit so harvest and we have stone, and we have minerals, and here's some food. So we're at our place, we have a little lifestyle block. I'm very much about growing our own food. Another truth, another freedom for me. Then we have the water element. I'm going in, in graduation from most gross element up to the most more refined element. Uh, but ultimately, ether is our is our ultimate blueprint. But I'm I'm starting from the earth and working from the ground up here. Yeah? Water element, like the earth element, is also a feminine. It's a feminine element. It's related to our emotions. 
it's the magnetism to our thought uh, e e electrical side, like I've mentioned. So it relates to our right brain. Water is all about being in flow. Uh, it's about, it's also related to, it's, it's got a relation to finance and liquidity, which is, which is really just about exchange of energy again. It's all about exchanging of energy and money like energy is supposed to be in flow and it's supposed to be liquid. So it relates to our bodily fluids, our blood, particularly in our blood plasma. Um, we're eighty percent water, so highly important. Uh, water has a consciousness, just like the Earth, just like the Earth planet, just like all the elements. It has its own consciousness, and we can now see consciousness appearing in the water through credible science they're doing now. You can think certain pictures, and it will appear in that picture. Will appear in the water through work they're doing with, 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 with ice, frozen water. They can now capture a person's thought in water. So whenever we're thinking, it's being imprinted into the waters in our own body. This is our emotional intelligence. It's about knowing we are an emotional being, we are energy in motion. This is our source of power. Uh, in the sense that it's our magnetism side. The magnetism is the power, whereas the thought is the directional element. Uh, when they're working in harmony, then we can create and manifest whatever we desire. But when our thoughts, are, oh, sorry, when our feelings are out of balance, or when we're out of balance in general, we're, ne we're not going to be powerful, we're not empowered. And that means having our left and right brain in perfect balance. It relates to our, our gut instinct, or, or really it's related to our creative sacral element, which is connected to our sexual aspect. Our sexual um, chakra is very much a, uh, important for our creativity. Water, as I've mentioned, it's uh, hydration. We need to be hydrated. We cannot survive a few, more than a few days without water. Water, to me, also is related to the listening side of communication. It is the internal listening as well as listening to someone. It is a receptive aspect of water. As I mentioned, it relates to the sacral chakra. It's related to the season of autumn because... For me, it's related to autumn because it's the time where we harvest. It's a time of great joy where we come together, where we, um, we're basically just reaping the fruits of our hard work. And there's a satisfaction in the emotional feeling aspect of our life. And for me, the questions with water is where and when. Where not just where are we on the physical earth, but where are we in space? Where are we in our journey of life? And when are we? When are we in, in time? When are we in the, the, great, the great cycles of time? And when are we in clock time, Kronos, Saturn? And um, when and where are very important to, I believe, to our emotional aspect life. How am I doing for time? Cool. Um, next we have the air element. The air element ten, ten minutes. is our mind. Cool. The air element relates to, particularly to our left brain of our mind. It's our intellect side. It's our thinking side. It's our reasoning it's our critical thinking, which is incredibly important, particularly right now when we um, have so much going on on the planet. We need to have our critical thinking functions very, very, very succinct, very, uh, very developed. Um, as I said, um, this relates to our direction. 
when we think there's an electrical component to our thoughts that govern our direction. And uh, it's like when we think of something, we're creating a timeline. We're literally creating a timeline. When we do visioning work or vision work, we're creating a timeline for us and we're creating a direction. This is, this is where we're going to be heading. When we think, what we predominantly think is where we're predominantly heading, but it must be balanced with our feelings. If our feelings are not in alignment with our thoughts, then we're not going in a uh, good direction. We're just creating chaos for ourselves because we've got conflict. We've got the conflict of the thought and the feeling. So we need, we need to be very clear on where we're going and we need to be sure that our feelings or our emotional side, our right brain is in, in full agreement of that direction. The air element to me is also a very innovative element. Um, it's, it's, it is related to our um, creating uh, along with our feelings, there's, there's obviously a feeling component as well, but the air element has a predominant innovative quality to it. As I say, it's sort of this is related to our mind or our three minds. Uh, the mind is not the brain. As I say, the brain is in the mind. The mind is our whole collective um, creative aspect. The air element is also related to our breath. Uh, this is where meditation and breath work is very, very important to balance our air element. It's important for deep breathing, for um, focused breathing, for slow conscious breathing. Doing things like yoga nidra is uh, a very important thing to do, uh, or just general meditation. And to me, the element, air element relates to the outward projection of communication, i.e. words and speaking. Um, words are just simply an extension of our, of our thoughts being uh, verbalised. Air element relates to, to me, it relates to the spring element because of its creative element, because it's the beginning new ideas, having spring cleaning, cleaning out the old, bringing in the new. Uh, it relates to our solar plexus na navel chakra, which is a very important part of our thinking process. And it's related to the what element. Uh, air, air element is, is predominantly concerned about what are we creating, what is our vision? It's, it's all about what do we do? Um, what's happening? It's all about the what. Then we, uh, in the completion of the four key elements of our, of our earth uh, plane, uh, is the fire element. It is the most fine finest element of our of our four elements it's uh like the air element it is also an outward or masculine kind of uh aspect to it although it's related to our soul and our heart the fire element is very much about action it's it brings warmth brings illumination it's about passion and ultimately, in its highest aspect or expression, it's about love, uh, which comes from the heart. So actions from the heart in love for, on purpose, are very, these are aligned actions. And uh, your, your thoughts and your feelings are all aligned with, with your soul and you're looking after yourself on, your, on the physical plane you will find your life a flow and, and uh, 
you will create very, very easily. It is, uh, whereas water element is very much about emotions, feelings are what I could, what in my view is a more higher refined version of emotion. Emotions can, we can get trapped in the emotions. Uh, we, we obviously need emotion and it's all about energy. But the ultimate emotion to me is the uh, feeling of love, a higher aspect of love, a higher aspect, sorry, of emotion, which will be felt in the centre, in the heart. It's about, yeah, it's all about illumination. Fire obviously brings illumination. The sun is a very much a fire element. Um, without the sun, we would not exist. Nothing would exist, just like water and earth and air. But the sun is, is very much related to our... It's our connection to our heart, but it's also uh, it's a connection to the spirit as well in the sense that the sun is an intermediary between us and the, the great central sun or the ultimate creative element or God, whatever you like to call it, um, universal creator. The sun is like a representation of ultimate creative creation so it brings warmth it brings light uh, which is obviously highly important and it's electromagnetic as I said we are electromagnetic beings the Sun is an electromagnetic um, illuminator and these are objective truths which we can integrate into our life the fire element is also, as, as it's quite an active element when it's fully been fully expressed. It's about uh, interacting with people, going out and meeting people. When you're in your passion, you 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 go out and you fire people uh, are very social. And when I say fire people, there's people who have a strong uh, natural. Uh, fire element as opposed to air or water or earth everyone has a predominant element or usually two predominant elements in them that come naturally through when they're born and uh, the type of person they are and uh, how they're brought up and basically there's everyone has certain innate elements the idea for us is to try and harmonise or, or, or integrate all of them into a nice, uh, integrated, aligned, in an aligned way. Uh, fire relates to summer. Obviously, summer because it's the warmest um, season. It's where the sun is at its greatest. Uh, and um, it's when we get active, you know, after the spring, we go into the summer and we, we start um, acting on our ideas that we've formed in the spring. And so it's when we get, we get quite active. And then, uh, as I say, then we, when we move into the autumn and the water element or the west, the west element, it's when we uh, start to... Um, it's when we start to sort of calm down or chill out a little more and then ultimately in winter when we get much we go within and we go quite still so the the seasons are a perfect cycle of of the elements it's, it's, uh, it's all in cycles Great. And as I said, the fire is all about the heart chakra, which is in our centre. And it's prime question for me. It's the prime question is who, who are you, who are we, um, who are you, um, who am I, uh, who is the creator. It's all about um, who, because it's predominantly 
comes from the soul. Ultimately, who we are is a soul and a spirit. You have four minutes, Tony. Okay. Uh, is there an N plus an N plus Q and A? Um, no. Oh, hang on. We've got one question. Oh, it's just it's just a comment. So yeah, no Q and A at the moment. So so that includes uh, that's up to one forty five. Okay. Um, so I'm going to finish on the ether element. I've got more slides in this, but obviously this was my main. My main objective was just to cover the, uh, the five elements and my basic overview of, uh, of truth and freedom in uh, consciousness. And ultimately, ether, the ether element is really the primary element because without ether, without the actual electromagnetism, without light, and when I say light, light isn't just physical light. Physical light comes from the etheric light. And etheric light, is created via toric fields. It um, creates a electromagnetic. Uh, the electromagnetics come from the constant cycling. If, if you imagine uh, energy coming down, as as shown on this diagram, energy comes up and around. It goes down through the center. It goes through the center, just as our heart is a torus field, it goes through the center, it goes down into the ground, which is where the material, materialism or our physical bodies are created on the downward side, and then it goes up and expands out into energy as it comes up and around, goes up over the top. Um, if ether is, is, relates to oneness, so we come from oneness and we're in, we're in a polarity world, but the, the polarity, the law of polarity plays out on earth, but ultimately we are all one, but we have to go through the polarity, the journey of polarity on earth. It's about understanding how to balance the polarity so that we can go back to being one. Um, to say it's a blueprint it's a blueprint and um, it's related to the quantum field it's qu the quantum field everything is connected everything is energy and everything is connected our even our body our bodies continue out in finer and finer versions from our physical body right out to the farthest reaches of the universe so we are literally connected to the universe intricately connected as, um, as the another law of correspondence goes, as above, so below, as below, so above, which basically means we are a fractal of the, of the ultimate. We are a fractal of the universe. Our body is a micronism of the macronism. And uh, we can connect through the ether, through our crown chakra, which is our ultimate exit from material, physical uh, existence, and our pineal gland is centrally uh, related to our crown chakra. It's the all-seeing eye. It's the ultimate um, seeing. Tony, um, yeah. okay, in, in your last one minute, uh, Tracy asked if you could repeat what you said about oneness and polarity. Would you be able to do that, or do you need to... Say a, say a bit more to... Okay, uh, everything on earth is governed by polarity. Everything is governed. Everything is an opposite. We have the left and we have the right. We have the above and below. We have... Um, everything is playing out in polarity. We see it in our politics. We have it in our economics. We have it in our physical body. But ultimately, in the ultimate essence of us is oneness. So we, we are all one, but we have to learn that we are also the, we have to find our oneness. We have to go through and understand the laws of polarity and balance the laws. Once the law, once the polarities in our mind and ultimately in our mind, it's all in our mind, 
when our mind and our consciousness evolves to such a degree, then ultimately we will exit the polarities. Our, the law of polarity will no longer apply. You could say that it applies to us while we're here on earth. But as we ascend in consciousness, then ultimately we can become one. Great. Thank, thanks a lot, Tony. That was great.